And we're back now with Sunday House Call. You know, multiple sclerosis affects about 2 million people around the globe. Well, now researchers say that you may be able to lower your risk for developing it by drinking at least four cups of coffee a day. Dr. Samadhi has long praised coffee as the happy beneficial drink. This is really interesting. Well, I hate to say that I told you so. About four years ago, we called a shot on this, and everybody came on attack by saying, like, oh, it causes heart disease, reflux, and it may do some of that stuff. But we're finding more and more. And, in fact, this week in the um, American Academy of Neurology in, in Washington, D.C., they reported this, that if you're having three to four cups, something about three to four. Now, most studies talk about six. I think that's too much. But something kicks in around three to four cups of coffee a day that can reduce and it has neuroprotective. What does it mean? Cases like MS, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's. By reducing some of the inflammation and cytokines, which is what coffee is capable of doing, it With reduces inflammation the inflammation where? Inf inflammation in your body. For example, like in the case of MS, we think that this is obviously inflammatory process and autoimmune is, is attacking some of these myelin sheets, right? So it looks like, not the caffeine itself, but a lot of these antioxidants that it has, it can reduce some of those cytokines and some of those what's, inflammatory what's processes. Cytokines are factors that, that communicate between cells, you know, so um, <clears throat> that's what's going on. Now, we also have seen, and that in other studies, it can reduce the risk of diabetes which is really fascinating. But that's if you're not adding a ton of sugar to your coffee. Which is, your point is well taken. Every time I talk about three to four cups, they're black cups of coffee. So what I do for myself, I drink three to four cups, and for every cup of coffee, I, take, I drink two glasses of water. So you get the ah. fluid hydration, yeah, yeah. and it's perfect. No sugar, no milk. Mark, you, and we, as we speak, by the way, Eric, just everything that we talked about right now is going live on Twitter. Come to Dr. David Samadhi, plus all the benefits of melanoma, diabetes, everything you, else. You, There's a whole Mark, list of I mean, you've talked about the benefits of coffee. Uh, caffeine, uh, too much of it could make you jittery. And you've talked about acid reflux, but there are a lot of benefits to it. I call it the happy drink. I think you have it, and you got, it has all these. <laughs> so, I don't know what it has, but it <laughs> makes you feel good. David did first introduce this on this show, and I'm giving him credit for that. Um, it has evolved over the last four years since we started talking about it. There's more and more observational research, meaning that we look at populations and we're finding that if you drink a lot of coffee, four to six cups in most studies, in this case, in today what we're talking about, it was four cups in the American study, six cups in the Swedish study. But let's say four cups, because that's the number David's been talking about. It looks like it decreases your risk of type 2 diabetes, decreases your risk of endometrial cancer, decreases your risk of melanoma. This is all re recent. You know, and so, and now it, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and today we're talking about multiple sclerosis. Dr. Mowry, who's the author of this study from Hopkins, thinks it's the caffeine in this case. It may be caffeine in some cases, it, it, mostly the coffee, the, the antioxidant effects. Here's the downside, though, and I want to be able to say this to everyone out there, because I, I don't want everyone to rush out and have four cups of coffee today without talking to their doctor first because do I need if you to stand up and choke you or you if you know I just want this is a little caveat I'm not disagreeing with okay, you I'm ahead. not disagreeing with you do you have ulcer disease mm. do you have a tendency for ulcer, ulcer disease do you have a reason that I don't want you to have an acidic stomach like Barrett's esophagus some precursor problem that could lead to esophageal cancer what am I worried about can you tolerate an increased heart rate I don't think that coffee leads anything to do with heart disease but can you tolerate an increased heart rate do you have anxiety can you sleep at night because we also say on the show don't have a lot of coffee right before you When's go to bed cut off time though even, so, if, even if you can handle the four cups of coffee like have it from what nine to noon and I say not in the evening I say don't have a, well, a good rule of thumb is not having it after dinner though I certainly break that rule myself I would say for most people don't true. have coffee after because dinner. because you get up in the middle of the night and you're gonna urinate and it's not good for you but look I think a lot of this and a lot of good points that just came up but most studies talk about the fact that even decaf is good for you because it's mostly the chlorogenic acid or that antioxidant that's good True. for you, quick, not the tea, caffeine. Tea, the same tea, thing is also, it, yeah. tea is also excellent, but it's not as strong as coffee. Okay. The other thing is just long term, it can lead to osteoporosis, so you take your vitamin D3 and calcium and exercise, but he's absolutely right. The disclosure for coffee is that if you have reflux, heart disease, pregnant, stay away. Okay. For everybody else, cheers. And he's gotten me to drink 
a lot more coffee. See, because then I don't sleep at night anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, then you <laughs> should kidding. stick around. I'm for kidding. I'm I want to hear your take on this. Kidding. For a lot of people that came yesterday <laughs> and complained, do I get paid by pharmaceuticals about all this medical marijuana? I don't have the stocks of any coffee companies. I don't get paid by anybody to say this. Well researched. It's all for you. It's a growing, burgeoning field, and it looks very, very good. We report you decide.